Hi guys. I've uh, had a busy couple of days. I've been up mums. Uh, didn't do a lot yesterday apart from help Biggles with a couple of vintage computers he had. One Amstrad, one Commodore VIC-22. Um, the VIC-22, the Commodore VIC-22, sorry, he's going to put on eBay because there's so much gear with it and most of it is boxed. It's got the data set deck with it as well, the cassette deck. Um, software on cassettes, and I think it's an 82 model. At least that's what that said in one of the softwares I was reading. Because it's got the user guides with it as well. And bunches of books for it and everything. Um, the Amstrad, however, made it home to me. Cost me uh, £40. And uh, yeah, I've got the joystick, I've got the um, computer itself, the power supply. This model's got the uh, built in disk drive. Not a floppy disk though. Um, it's a model CPC 6128. It's got the external disk drive as well, so you can actually run two disk drives. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that with this. But a few other disks and things in here and games. And you see, there's a five and a quarter flexi disk. See, see it flexing. There's actually two of those in here. The games and whatnot I've got for it are um, on these sort of hard disks, I suppose. Because that looks like a metal disk in there to me. And I do believe they're double sided. Lords of Midnight, this is. There's a couple of other. I wouldn't mind trying to get that to run. But I think you need the, um, the um, cassettes as well to run it. I think. I believe that's what this is missing. Yeah. It's missing the um, cassette, so. You've got to run the cassette first, I believe. But, uh, never mind. It does work. It all comes up on the TV and whatnot. So. I'm pretty happy for that. That was a good price for that. If I wanted to get something like this on eBay, especially in working order, I'm pretty certain I'd had to have uh, forked out a bit more than that. But uh, while I'm on the subject of this desk, that's being moved into the bedroom. The stereo is likely going to go up here somewhere. Either that shelf where the old radio is, or up the top there. Um, and all those consoles and things, and my Amstrad. It's going to go in that gap here. So at some point, I hope tomorrow, I'll have that gap clear. Those Lego instructions have got to go into the bedroom. Uh, put these bloody cars up, but the car's knocked off there. In fact, if I can find somewhere else to put those bloody things, I will. <laughs> um, Maybe on top of those computers, because uh, they won't get knocked. Um, yeah, so that's the plan for tomorrow. Tonight I've got a few parcels I want to get packed up ready for tomorrow. Uh, I've got to pay my rent and go across to pay that. And I think while I'm out, as I've got one of these post office cards, telling me that there's two parcels waiting for me at the um, sorting office. I'm going to go pick those up tomorrow. I know exactly what they are. They are my ink cartridges and my blue LED bike lights I bought. Uh, hopefully tomorrow as well I'll have another parcel arrive. I bought a, um, another one gigabyte PC2 4200 DDR2 stick for this because um, I did research on it last night and found that the second DIMM slot is here under the keyboard um, and where I found the specs from for this it also showed you how to remove the keyboard and change the memory there was actually a 512 megabyte stick in here but it wasn't registering on the computer because it was a PC to 5300. 
missed supports 4200 max. So I've put a um, 512 DDR2 stick in, which is a PC2 4200, but I haven't tried the machine yet. I'll uh, do that in a little while. So that's on Windows 7 as well. It's got a Windows Vista on it, dual core processor, blah -de blah blah. But uh, it won't be the fastest Windows 7 on the planet, but fast enough to use while I'm chilling in bed watching TV. I hope. <laughs> um, I've got my Toshiba Tekra up there, lying on top of the brick, <laughs> which is an HP. I'll just move the chair out of the way. Yeah, that's the brick. That's the Toshiba. That I need to get a keyboard for. That's the only thing preventing me from turning that into a functioning laptop. The keyboard was um, busted. Not all the keys worked. Um, uh, none of the arrow keys worked, and there's a few buttons in this area that didn't work or malfunction, so I'm guessing someone had an accident with a drink and uh, fried the keyboard. But the rest of the laptop works absolutely fine. So I'll get a keyboard for that, and that will be the replacement laptop for my compact. That compact I'll retire as a um, historical piece and put in my stack of. Uh, classic laptops down there. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's a change around to come. Uh, I've got an appointment tomorrow, so that's going to throw a spanner in the works, at least for a couple of hours. Um, at some point in the future, that sofa will go down out of the way and be dumped give me some extra room up there, so... Actually, I've just had an idea. If I'm going to put the coffee table from the lounge in this gap, because I will want something to put on. I know it's going to be early for some, but I am going to need somewhere to put the Christmas tree as well. But I could, for the time being, just sit the stereo system on here. That would, uh, work. Um... Sort of extension lead out as well because I don't really need the four. Actually, yeah, I will need a four way down there, so that's going to stay there, the four way. So I'll have all the lights on the tree and the stereo and whatnot. But um, hopefully, by the time I'm done sorting out, I'll be able to get the Amstrad on this desk as well. But you're probably wondering why I don't just put the coffee table in the bedroom and put everything on that. Well, that's because this one has all the shelves. So I can like put a console on each shelf, sort of thing. That's the reason I'm swapping. But um, yeah, if I'm actually going to leave the coffee table there, then I could really leave the stereo there. And just put the stereo one side, speak to the other side, and when Christmas gets here, I can put the trees smack bang in the middle. <laughs> Isn't that right, Nemo? Yeah? You think that's a good idea? You don't give a crap either way, do you? <laughs> Ooh, have I got any parcel tape? I don't want to go starting to make parcels with no parcel tape. Shit. Not enough. Bollocks. <laughs> uh, okay, then. I don't even think... No, there's not even... Mm, I might get a small box out of there. <laughs> Alright then, I'll leave that till the morning. That's that idea out the window. Crap. <laughs> oh well. Shit happens, as they say. Or a drink before I do anything to take my pill with. Where is it? There it is. Uh, oh, 
oh yeah, I nearly forgot. Um, in a couple of months' time, maybe sooner, I'll have a PlayStation 3. Yeah, I know it's probably not nothing much to get excited over, but my brother's going to be selling his. I don't know why, because he's only not so long ago he bought the damn thing. So, but, uh, never mind. He's going to sell it to me. Um, Forty pounds cash. Uh, before you say that's bloody cheap for those that live in the UK. Um, the other catch is. Because he needs um, 8 gigabytes of DDR3 memory for his PC, I've got to buy that as well. <laughs> so, I need to look on eBay at some point to get that. Um, that'll be the part I'll do first. Uh, I only really want the PS3 just to be able to play um, GTA 5. I don't know if he's got it for the PS3. And if he has, I don't know if he's uh, played it and completed the game. That would be nice, because then I'd have the game save. <laughs> I wouldn't have to play the game. Because I just want the game to piss about on, really. You know, crash the cars, fire guns, blow things up, run people over, etc, etc. Try and evade the cold, all that sort of fun crap. Uh, not that I'll probably use it much anyway. Yep, 1st of October. It's now illegal in the UK to smoke in a car, or a vehicle, I should say, with a person that's under 18 present. So you can't smoke in a car, or any vehicle, if you've got a minor in the vehicle with you. Uh, and also today, it's become mandatory for shops and supermarkets to charge you five pence yeah about five pence per bag you use disposable bag like that um, I think the idea is is to try and cut down on the amount of bags used so why don't they just stop using them <laughs> it's just another money making gimmick because they know people are going to buy them, because they know that people are going to forget and need a bag. Uh, Lidl's, however, they've always charged for their bags. They've charged for their bags, well, they first opened up in town in 2001. So ever since we've had a Lidl in town, they've charged, and I'm pretty certain they charged for bags before that, although I could be wrong. But uh, not everybody uses little. I don't know why, because you get some good stuff out of there if people give it a chance. You know, if they weren't so um, upper class, as it were. <laughs> Although, having said that, you now I do see the um, richer types shop in there. But like I said, if people just give it a chance. They do sell some decent stuff in it. Yeah, not all of it is decent, obviously, you know, it's like anywhere. But you do get some good, cheaper products that may not have your brand names like Bloody Heinz or something stamped on it. But um, they do do Heinz products. But most of it is their own branded stuff. Um, but it's a lot cheaper. Uh, you go into Sainsbury's and to buy three slices of corned beef in a pack, sealed pack, will cost you a little less than three pounds. To get a pack of six slices out of Lidl will cost you one pound fifty. I 
And what makes me laugh is Sainsbury's motto is live well for less. Bollocks. If you've ever shopped in a Sainsbury's, I don't know if it's like this in any other Sainsbury's around the country, but the one in up my town is rather expensive. I used to think Waitrose was an expensive supermarket, but I haven't been into Waitrose probably two years, if not more now. But I'm actually thinking of cycling across town and starting to use them. Or at least give it a try and see if it an, is any cheaper. Or, you know, on par with Sainsbury's prices. Because the only supermarkets we've got in my town is Little Sainsbury's and Waitrose. We don't have any others. And before Waitrose arrived, we just had Sainsbury's and Little. So Sainsbury's didn't have much competition. And to add insult to injury, our Sainsbury's fuel station is one of the most expensive in this area because it is the only one in town and is the only one for miles. And this has been discussed on one of my local town groups. And someone asked the staff why it was so much more than most other fuel stations around the county or in this area. And um, apparently, and this is the reply they quoted, because they can. So they're basically ripping off um, the townsfolk because they can. Because they're... Mum filled up her Asda the other day and it cost £1.5p a litre. In town, it's six pence more. And the fuel is actually shit. <laughs> well, the fuel is shit and Mum's car isn't running very well at the moment either. Um, it's fine when you're flying on the road at sort of 40, 50, 60, you know, when you've got your revs up. But as soon as you come to an idol, it doesn't do it every time, but it's got this habit that when you come to an idol, it'll just stall. For no reason whatsoever. Just for the fact that the revs have dropped, and that just goes, bleh. You know, you could have come to a stop at traffic lights, or a junction, or you're trying to move around at a car park. Um, there's been times where mum has just been moving around at a car park to park the car, and the damn thing has stalled out. Um, it has been suggested it could be the fuel filter um, clogged, which yeah, I suppose it could be. So, you know, I guess that it'll suck more through the harder you hit the throttle, so it's probably not affecting it at high revs. Um, I did wonder if perhaps cleaning the spark plugs up might help because we've never done anything like that. No one in the family ever thinks of doing things like that. As long as they can get in the car and drive it, that's all they can do, really. When it comes to maintenance, not many in the family even know how to do the basics. I do, because I used to watch and help Dad often enough when he um, dealt with the family cars when Mum and Dad were together. Um... You know, he'd change the brake pads when they needed to, and he'd change the tyres. He'd change spark plugs when they needed it. He'd change the oil when they needed it. But then again, to me, that sort of stuff isn't hard anyway. But I suppose it could be to someone who's, you know, may not be that technically minded. Um which is fine you know we're all different some of us can uh, some of us have minds that work better with technical stuff like mine does ask it a maths question and my mind just freezes and I'm serious you ask me a maths question and my mind will just blank <laughs> I hate math my brain hates math we both hate math to see what the time's doing. Oh, 20 minutes. A bit longer than I planned, but...
Um, I think I've covered everything. I'm trying to keep my glass away from the cat because he's molten and I don't want hair in it. Because I'm about to use it. Um, oh, that desk tidy sitting there. That came in that box with the um, Amstrad. So uh, I was going to change it. So I can get pens and things out of this one easier than I can the one over the back. I'm not going to get rid of the one over the back because that's handy to keep um, pins and things in in them trays. So I may drop the pins in. Oops, I just caught the sellotape. Pins in here because I do use drawing pins a lot. Because uh, I'm going to go back to Christmas again quickly. But when it comes to Christmas, I'm not one for buying presents, or I'm not really one for that cares if I get presents or not. But I do like spending time with family, and I do like putting up the decorations, and the tree, and the lights. Surprise, surprise, the lights. <laughs> Actually, last year, someone, um, just the other side of town, he's a builder, and he made a Christmas tree out of his traffic cones and then decorated it with all his barricade lamps <laughs> which um, was not only weird but quite novel as well and quite unique anyway I'm going to disappear because I'm getting tired I was going to do something in the bedroom like take a couple of them computer cases apart might do that, or I might just chill out on the PC and save that till tomorrow, I don't know yet. I'll probably chill out on the PC, actually, knowing me. So, thanks for watching. Like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already, because I do upload videos almost daily. There'll be a day here and there where I may not, because I'm, I've been busy and feel too tired. And, um, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.